My summaries for the first two stories in Tales from the Pizzaplex Book 7, those being Tiger Rock and the Monty Within, are now out. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a summary on the third and final story in the book titled Bleeding Heart. Unlike the other two, which I heard a couple minor things about, I knew absolutely nothing about the story before reading it, except that it was apparently really screwed up. And after reading the story myself, I can confirm that this story is really f***ed up. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say that this story contains a few sensitive topics, so you should probably watch at your own risk. Keep in mind, this won't be the last summary, as I will be, will be doing one for the epilogue of the book, but for now, let's get started on Bleeding Heart. The main character of Bleeding Heart is a guy named Danny, who was in high school and had a massive crush on a girl named Daisy who he found to be the coolest girl in school. The story begins with her walking in his direction while he was at his locker. Shockingly to him, she actually came up to him and talked to him. He nervously said hi while a bunch of bugs seemed to be hitting him in the face. Daisy told him that breakfast was ready as he saw cereal around him. He was confused until he woke up from his dream to find his room with his mom telling him from somewhere else in the house that his breakfast was ready. Of course it was a dream, because Daisy never showed him any attention. Meanwhile, Danny was really into her even having drawn her a couple times. Then he spotted his three-year-old brother Johnny in the doorway of his room, throwing cereal at his head, which was what he was feeling in his dream, and what he saw in the dream as well. After that, his mom showed up in his doorway and told him to get up and that his breakfast toaster tarts were on the table. Then, like a true mother, told him his room is a mess and to clean it up. Danny cleared all the cereal off his bed and the floor and threw it in the garbage can and headed to the kitchen to eat his toaster tarts, which he hadn't liked for years but always ate them because his mom just kept making them for him. He started eating when his older brother Bobby came rushing in with Johnny moving rapidly around the kitchen. Johnny seemed to have a little trouble speaking and went to speech therapy, but everyone in the house learned to understand him. Bobby seems to be a senior and is really into training, and Danny was the middle child who was kind of quiet and liked to draw, and he's 15. He's honestly a pretty relatable character to me. At least in the case that he's 15, which I won't even be for much longer, so he's not really that relatable. But whatever. Also, I should mention that this story takes place not too long before Christmas. Anyway, Danny's mom told him to get home by 3.30 because he had to look after Johnny because he would be home at 4 after his speech therapy and mom would be home at 5. Danny's mom seemed to rush around a lot, which seemed to stem from taking care of the house, three boys, and working full-time all while their dad was on a business trip, so she was doing all this alone. Bobby was picked up by his friend, and Danny began walking to school, meeting up with his best friend Aaron on the way. When they made it to school, Danny pulled out a drawing of Daisy and slipped it through the vent in her locker. Just then, Daisy showed up through the halls, and Danny essentially sensed it before even seeing her. Daisy turned a lot of heads, and Aaron decided to say hi to her as she walked past, and she looked at him, and then, for the first time, Daisy actually turned and looked at Danny. She then waved and continued to walk. Danny asked Aaron if he was insane, but Aaron said that it's really not a big deal because he has geometry with her. Danny asked why he never told him about that, but he never asked. Danny goes on asking what she's like, but Aaron says there's not really anything special about her, and Danny essentially says cap. So Aaron heads to class, and Danny watches as Daisy opens her locker and looks at the drawing. Danny looked inside his own locker so as to not seem suspicious, but when he looked back, she was gone. He wondered if she would love the picture or if she'd bring it home or something, but unfortunately for him, he found it crumpled up on the ground next to her locker. That evening at dinner, Danny was thinking about and talking to his dad about how to impress a girl when he came home. Since his parents were high school sweethearts, he figured his dad would know. Just then, his dad called and he grabbed the phone first, but then the three brothers fought over who talked to dad only for their mom to show up and take the phone. On Sunday, Danny's mom brought the boys to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, which was all decorated for the holidays, and while they were there, they got pizza and Danny and Bobby played arcade games. Danny was never as good at games as Bobby was, and he used up all his tokens pretty quickly. While he was watching Bobby play a game, he asked him if he could ask a question, and this distracted Bobby and made him lose, but he let him ask anyway. He could instantly tell it was about a girl, he'd seen the drawings of her in his sketchbook. Basically, Bobby suggested that Danny actually talk to her and give her a gift from Santa's Giftplex, an area that was added to the Pizzaplex for the holidays. The Pizzaplex would be closing soon, and Danny didn't have much money, so he had to hurry up. The Giftplex was actually really cool, with a bunch of nice stuff you could get for people for Christmas, and there was even an area where you can insert the gift and it automatically wraps it in a really cool, unreal, and insane way, where all the wrapping paper and colorful designs would basically flow like liquid around the gift. He saw a girl with her arms inside an area next to a large vat, and when she pulled her arms out, they were tattooed. 
because Daisy actually had a tattoo unlike everyone else in the school, Danny thought this would be the perfect way to get Daisy to notice him. The Pizzaplex would be closing in 5 minutes and he got a text from Bobby telling him to hurry up and he said that he was running a bit late and to wait for him. Then the lights shut off in the giftplex as Danny was hiding, staying in after hours. He quickly decided to get into the gift wrapping machine, somehow able to squeeze through a gap since it was just thick and movable plastic, so he was able to just push it and squeeze through. He found that the gifts were being wrapped by extremely small robots, which were floating and were the same color as the glass, making them hard to see, and these robots were also what left the tattoo on the girl's arm. Danny decided to grab a few of the bots, which proved to be a bit difficult, but he was able to do it, and stuffed them in his pocket so that he could get them to tattoo him however he wanted, whenever he wanted. After that, he heard a security guard and rushed back outside and to the car, playing it off like nothing happened. When he got home though, he found that the bots were gone. At first he was upset, but then he thought maybe it was for the best. He'd stolen them and he knew stealing wasn't good, so it wasn't really a huge deal that he'd lost them. The next day, Aaron couldn't have lunch with Danny because he was writing a makeup test, and Danny was upset about that because while he didn't mind being alone, he specifically didn't want to be alone for high school lunch. However, he did manage to see Daisy in the library. While she attracted many glances, Daisy didn't have many friends, so right now she was just sitting alone. Danny saw this as his opportunity to talk to her, so he actually did. He approached her and found she was reading a tattoo book. So when he paused after saying hi to her, he asked about the tattoos and which one was her favorite, and asked if she was thinking of getting another one. He was clearly nervous and accidentally rambled a little bit, but the conversation actually started off decently well, and he was really excited because he was actually talking to her. To impress her, he told her that he liked tattoos and that he wanted a heart one on his side, which Daisy also said she wanted. But then Danny strangely felt sharp pains dig into his side. The first was painful, but not enough that it couldn't be ignored as he continued talking about tattoos. They introduced themselves to each other when he got another sharp pain in his side very suddenly, causing him to yelp and keel over. And Daisy seemed concerned and asked if he was okay, and he said it's nothing and that he had to go. He left the library noticing a bunch of people staring at him on the way out. He rushed to the bathroom and entered a stall noticing that there was blood coming down his side, noticing that there was a small carving of a heart engraved into his side. A bleeding heart. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha. He immediately connected it to the bots, but he was so confused because not only did he think he lost them, but they were also supposed to draw on his skin, not carve into his skin. He wiped away the blood and rushed to his locker, and as he did his combination, he heard Daisy's voice behind him. She was looking for him, wondering why he disappeared so fast. She noticed the blood on his shirt and asked if he was okay, and if he needed to get to the nurse, and he said he was fine. She could tell he was acting strange, so for some reason Danny decided to show her the heart. I don't know why the hell he decided that was a good idea, but she then thinks that he just did this himself and was impressed by his skill in tattooing himself, and he played it off, thanking her. They ended up exchanging phone numbers, which Danny was really excited about, but when he talked to Aaron about this, he questioned whether he should text first or wait for her to text him. Meanwhile, Aaron, who had just caught up to Danny after he didn't wait for him to walk together after school, was just shocked that he actually talked to Daisy and got her number. When Danny got home, he immediately went and checked his pants pockets and found two small holes in them, holes that the bots had cut. He realized that there must have been two different types of bots, one to paint on all the colors and designs, but another one that had to cut all the ribbons and wrapping paper. The latter is the type of bots that Danny accidentally got. He didn't get the painting ones, he got the carving ones. Danny then grabbed a magnifying glass and searched his legs, finding two small marks big enough for the bots to slip through. The bots were now inside Danny's body. He immediately rushed to the bathroom and threw up. He ended up calling his dad because he wanted to talk to him. He knew he couldn't tell his dad what was going on, but his dad would also be able to convince him that everything would work out, like he always did. But his dad didn't answer and didn't call him back. On the way to school the next day, Danny was a bit dry when Aaron talked about books, but then when they got to school, Daisy showed up and asked if Danny wanted to go look at body art magazines at lunch, and her approaching him put a smile on his face. He said he'd be there, and while he worried about leaving Aaron alone, he figured he would understand, so he texted Aaron that he was busy at lunch and would see him after school. So then we got to lunch with Danny and Daisy in the library looking at tattoo magazines and talking about which ones they liked. Danny said he most liked the animal ones, but that he would most likely just draw his own design for a tattoo that he wanted. Daisy asked Danny if he could draw out a design and show her tomorrow, and he agreed. When he got home, he immediately started drawing the tattoo design, a grizzly bear, in his sketchbook. When he finished, he thought it was one of his better drawings and said that he wanted a tattoo like this right on his shoulder. He instantly regretted saying this, as even though he tried to say he meant one day and not two day, the bots had already started making the tattoo. 
It was extremely painful, but eventually it stopped. When it did, he took off his hoodie and looked at what had been created. If it were a real tattoo, it would have been really cool, but it was carved into his skin and was covered in blood. It wasn't exactly the flashiest tattoo. He realized he had to be much more careful with what he said. He also had to throw his now bloody clothes in the washing machine so his mom didn't question it. The next day, Daisy approached Danny while he was still with Aaron, and he showed her the bear he drew. Aaron questioned the fact that they talked about tattoos and talked about how he thinks that they're kind of stupid, and Daisy, consistently getting his name wrong, argued back to him saying that it's amazing art, and she seemed to be trying to one-up him by saying that she and Danny hang out at lunch now, almost like she was trying to prove that she was a better friend than Aaron. Aaron kind of got mad and stormed off telling Danny to do whatever he wants and hang out with her all the time instead of him. Danny felt bad, but he knew that Aaron just didn't understand what this was like for Danny. He was really happy to now be friends with Daisy. Daisy also told Danny that he should walk her to class, putting a hand on his shoulder causing him to jerk away. She recognized that he had given himself another tattoo. She asked him to show her and he said that he would at lunch, which we cut to next. She asked questions like if it hurts, but more importantly how he's been making these tattoos, and he told her that it was a secret, but that he might tell her another time. Then they started talking about their lives and how Daisy stays with her nanny because her parents are always on business trips and how she doesn't have siblings. Danny then talks about how his dad is on a business trip too. Danny suddenly felt really bad for Daisy because she wouldn't even be seeing her parents for Christmas. Aaron was really wrong about her. She just couldn't spend time with her parents and didn't have many friends. Danny might have even been her only friend. Daisy only occupied her time with her interest in tattoos, and now Danny, and Danny told her that she could count on him anytime, and then they started discussing ideas for his next tattoo, which he didn't know if he could take, but it made Daisy happy. The next one he got was a hummingbird design on his other shoulder, because Daisy loved hummingbirds. This time he prepared himself for the cleanup, but it didn't get any less painful getting carved up from the inside. The end result though was very much liked by Daisy, so much so that she wanted him to do one on her. He said no of course, telling her that it was really hard and painful to do, but when he insisted that he couldn't, she was frustrated and told him that she was meeting somebody, but she wasn't actually, she just said that she was because she was mad at him. Danny didn't want to lose Daisy as a friend, so he convinced her to stay by saying that maybe he can do one for her at some point, but it'll be a while before he does. She told him to tell her whenever that time was, and he agreed. That day when walking home, Aaron didn't talk much. When Danny tried to explain what happened with Daisy, Aaron told him that she's stuck up and is just using Danny, but he didn't believe that. He told Aaron that she's not like that, and also that just because he's spending time with her doesn't mean that he's still not his best friend. When they parted ways, Danny got a text from Daisy telling him he should do a black cat next. Danny ended up sketching out the black cat, filling it in to make sure it was black. I don't think that would really make a difference considering it's carved out of his skin, but whatever. Then his mom came into his room and asked why he did his laundry and he told her that he got paint on his clothes and didn't want them to stain. Danny's mom thanked him and asked for some help in the kitchen, and he did help her and after that we see them all having dinner together when dad calls. They put the phone on speaker and on the phone with dad, Bobby decided to expose that Danny likes a girl at school and asked him for advice. His mom and dad tried to talk to him about it, but Bobby was just really immature about it, which got Danny mad, prompting him to storm up to his room. He then said that he wanted the picture of the cat on his stomach, but this time it hurt way more than usual. During the cleanup process, he found a squishy, floppy piece of flesh in the shape of the cat that he drew. The boss had literally cut it out from a piece of his actual stomach. Danny felt weak for a while, assuming that he lost too much blood, but the next morning he still walked to school. When he made it to the corner where he usually met Aaron, he wasn't there. He seemed to still be mad. When he made it to school, Daisy was waiting for him at his locker, and she told him about a body art expo in town for the next day, and that they had to go, and Danny told her that since it was a Saturday and the start of winter break, it should be no problem. He didn't think his mom would exactly want him going to a tattoo exhibit though, so he told her that he would just be going to Aaron's house. Just then, his mom got a call that his dad caught an early flight and was coming home today, so they had to go pick him up from the airport. Danny didn't want to upset Daisy because she was worried if he didn't go with her that she would hate him, so he told his mom that he wasn't going to come to the airport and would see him when he comes home. He arrived at the expo late, but Daisy didn't think too much of it. They were both really excited for this, and she gave him his wristband and offered her hand for him to hold it. It seemed like Daisy really liked Danny just as much as he liked her. We cut over to Daisy's perspective 
perspective as she and Danny explore the expo. They go up to a tattoo artist and she starts talking with him a lot about his stuff, and then she asks Danny, who she knew was always trying to please her, to grab her a grape soda. At first, that was why she hung out with him, but as she hung out with him more and more, she found he was actually a good friend. We cut back to Danny's perspective who took quite a long time to get a grape soda and he worried that he might not be able to find Daisy, but it wasn't hard because even after all this time, she was still at the same tattoo booth. Danny didn't like that she was spending more time focusing on this creepy tattoo guy instead of him, the guy she came here with. He started worrying that Aaron may have been right. What if she was using him? Danny's old feeling of going completely unnoticed washed back over him. He heard Daisy ask the same questions she'd asked him so many times. What are you going to get next? Danny snapped. He felt used. He felt discardable. So he interrupted the conversation and said, I want all of your designs. And I instantly knew what would happen when I read that. Whenever he said he wanted something as a tattoo, the bots would carve it into him. This was a tattoo artist that had just spent at least five minutes showing off his many, many designs. So after he said that, massive amounts of pain stabbed Danny all over his arms and legs. He started dripping with blood, and Daisy's eyes widened as his, as his clothes grew red with his blood. Daisy watched in horror as Danny reached out to her with a hand that dripped with blood, saying, Isn't this what you wanted? Daisy was horrified, and as the perspective switches back to her, she begins to run away as Danny chases after her. Daisy didn't know what was wrong with Danny, but she knew that she had to get away from him because something was clearly wrong. She ran down a hallway that had said no trespassing and found an unlocked door and went through, shutting it and locking it behind her. Behind the door, she could hear the weak voice of Danny trying to explain. He told her that he liked her and just wanted her to notice him, and she was surprised by this, which I really don't know how since he was really obvious about it. He told her the drawings in her locker were from him as well. Eventually, he stopped talking, and now Daisy was worried. She opened the door and found a puddle of blood, but no Danny. Daisy knew that Danny was sick and that he needed help. She was scared, but he was her friend. She had to help him, so she followed the trail. She called for him, telling him that she was just a little scared and won't run anymore. She found something on the ground that was kind of pinkish and whitish, but she didn't know what it was. It was in the shape of a daisy, the flower, obviously. not. It wasn't in the shape of her, it was in the shape of a flower. Then she found one in the shape of a heart, then a crescent moon, and then a rocket ship, and then more and more tiny shapes. All of them were smeared with blood, and they were turning a darker pink as she found them. As she moved, she found Danny's bloody clothes and a much broader area of blood. More and more shapes were on the floor, and Daisy even found Danny's cell phone vibrating with missed calls from his dad and his mom. Some of the shapes seemed to be pieced together. There was an odd and disgusting smell. She asked again if Danny was here and turned on a light, which illuminated a still, human heart in the center of the silent room. And that is the end of Bleeding Heart, a very strange and screwed up story that I honestly don't have much to say about. It doesn't seem to have been about the mimic this time, unlike the other stories in this book, and the ending was clearly just that the bots had torn apart Danny's entire body to have enough of his flesh to make the shapes. The last like five pages were honestly really depressing and I found it well written, but the story as a whole just felt a little off to me. Danny's loyalty to Daisy felt almost like the new kid, but Daisy at least showing a little interest, but I feel like the characters weren't exactly written the best that they could have been. The story overall was pretty decent, but I'd personally say it was the weakest of the book. But I'm curious to know your thoughts. What did you think about Bleeding Heart? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Let me know in the comments, and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to, and stay tuned for that final summary, the one for the epilogue. But that's all, and I'll see you all for that summary tomorrow. Bye, guys!